Okay, so for this video, uh, Dale and I are going to go through the rover, um, mostly for the benefit of the new owner of it, and uh, we'll show you the operation of all the controls, all the switches and so on, uh, as well as the sort of basics of the general layout uh, of the car, the powertrain, etc. So we'll, we'll turn this camera around and we'll go through, you know, what all the bits are and what they do and how to work them and how to start the car and go through it. So if you had any questions about how to um, operate a vintage Land Rover, hopefully this video will be useful. All right, so what we're looking at is a, a two and a quarter liter petrol engine connected to a four speed gearbox with synchro mesh only on the third and fourth gears. Uh, so this means shifting into second is a little precarious and requires some practice, double clutch downshifting, and uh, really, practically speaking, is probably best avoided because the engine does have a lot of lugging power. So you really, you just hit third gear and lug it rather than attempt a, a three, two downshift. Um, just starting at the back of the engine bay here this is a kodiak heater it was um these were these were dealer installed there's like five different kodiak heaters we can see the the fan is uh, buried in the corner of the fender and then the heater core is beneath uh, uh beneath this structure here and uh and then the fan blows through the heater core into the cabin which then is connected to the demisters okay so that's how that works um, that is the voltage regulator. Um, this is a fuse box. Pull off that and you get two 25 amp fuses. Um, so that's not too complicated. Uh, the, we have the, the cloth wiring harness here and that goes basically behind that is the instrument panel. Uh, we have the coil here. It should be black, but we couldn't find a black one that works. So we have a blue one. Um, and the, uh, this uh, reservoir here is for both brake and clutch. You can see two brake hoses underneath it. And uh, so those run to the master cylinders, which are buried under the fender. The one closest to the edge uh, is the clutch and the one with the bracket on it is the brake. You see the steering column poking through the bulkhead and the steering box is there. The steering box has uh, the brass, or it's actually a steel nut there, is the oil filler. Um, then uh, we have the steering rods and the ball joints, which travel along the frame rail and go into a steering relay, which is a cylindrical uh, gearbox that goes through the frame rail vertically through the frame rail it gets picked up with these I guess we're gonna call them drag links and uh, is that right Dale drag links and these uh, steering rods steering arms what are these transverse ones called uh, there's tie rods and there's a drag link so the big one the one that runs between the wheels is a drag link and then the tie rods go along to each individual wheel all right Okay, and then we've got the big axle differential and the swivel balls. Um, so, that's a, so that's the device that allows power to be uh, driven from the front wheels and also them to turn. And we can see that we've got those, um, those locking nuts on there and the retaining rings and seals. The swivel ball housing uh, is filled with grease and periodically they need to be re-greased and the ball joints are all they're self-contained right we don't grease those the ball joints yeah so they're so we don't grease the ball joints in this uh in this vehicle um we see those um trapezoidal trapezoidal items those are rubber bump stops uh to um uh, to prevent the axle from contacting the frame. And what else do we have here? Uh, mud flaps down there. And, uh, and then we have the, 
shock absorbers there. Okay. Um, this is a capstan winch. Uh, it is a mechanical winch that's driven off the front of the crank. Um, there are two collars uh, that mate uh, via pins and this lever that transfer the drive from the front of the crank through uh, a drive shaft supported by uh, a bearing which also has an oil, oil fitting into it into the main gearbox of the capstan. The bollard of the cap, capstan turns uh, with the engine revolutions. There is a hand throttle that's acted on this cross shaft uh, which is controlled to the pedal assembly and also makes its way into the interior of the cabin with a throttle um, quadrant to set the engine speed and that sets the bollard. There's a rope that you wrap around, it's a two-man job uh, and that is the winch. It's uh, similar to what they have on sailboats and ships. Um, the linkage is quite complicated. Now uh, that's the lever there. Um, this nut here um, turns with the crank. Um, so in theory, you can um, use that nut to turn over the engine. Oh, that's kind of hard. Uh, we have this, these uh, alloy brackets here and this cross shaft, which is set in bearings and this rolls uh, to go along with the rope. And there was grease nipples on the side of that. Uh, this brass uh, nut here is the oil filler for the capstan gearbox. Um, maybe Dale will show you how to connect the capstan. I'll go underneath and let's just take a look at this. So, so initially you have to come underneath to align the, the pins with the drive gear on the capstan. So this is the shaft that drives, or this is the end of the shaft that drives the capstan. And yeah. you can see pins on the end of the, of the crankshaft pulley. Let's, let's just get a better view of that here. Okay. So we have... So let's go through the operation of this capstan winch. Um, so what we basically have is uh, a linkage and drive shaft assembly uh, that connects to the front of the crankshaft. Um, the speed of the capstan is then uh, geared down uh, and is dependent on the engine revs. Um, we have a quadrant in the cabin uh, with these little notches here and that then controls the um, the engine speed and the capstan speed as well. Okay, so uh, we have uh, a main uh, plate to support the capstan uh, that is bolted to the bumper and also bolted to the frame. Uh, we have this really sturdy guide bar where the shaft is on bearings with grease nipples uh, to keep it lubricated. We have the main um, housing and gearbox for the capstan. The top bit is called a bollard and then we can see the um, gearbox part of the capstan there and the uh, the bolt in the center is uh, for the uh, oil to the oil to drain. Okay and then we add oil with this brass nut and then this is the lever assembly. Um, to get the capstan to work, you need to, I mean, you could just jam this lever with the engine running and it would make a horrible noise and it eventually, eventually connect. It's, it's, and I suppose if you had to do it, you could do that, but it's a better idea to uh, get under the car and move that collar. Uh, and uh, it's located by three pins. And so it's a better idea to locate those manually just to save a little bit of wear. Um, and so we'll do that now. And so we'll, I'll get Dale and I to go under the car. We'll show you this linkage and uh, what this pin 
looks like. It's a little um, crowded in there, so forgive us. But uh, uh, you can see the, the bottom of the capstan gearbox. And on the end of it, we've got this um, drive shaft and it's on an angle. Um, so it's a, it's a spline shaft, okay? And then we've got the linkage supported by the bracket that travels through the aperture in the cross member, okay? So then it pops out, um, it pops out here. And what you're looking at now, if we can get that is, um, is the support for the drive shaft with a bearing in it. And we can see the drive shaft turning. Uh, we can see the pins for the, uh, for the linkage. And there is that collar then, which slides back and forth. Uh, there's a, a radial groove cut in it uh, with a bracket there, so that can move back and forth. And then uh, that uh, collar, we can get this here. Um, let's see, yeah, that's good. It does that, and we can see it act on the front of the crankshaft there. So you can see that if the crank is turning and you just jam that in, then, uh, you know, it's gonna be an awful jolt. Uh, and so it's a better idea just to go and hand fit that. And you can, you can um, rotate the collar so it aligns with the pins and then manually, uh, you know, use the lever and uh, transfer the drive. And that's actually, you know, once you get do it a few times, it's relatively easy. Um, I suppose if you're in a big, puddle of mud it might be it wouldn't be much fun <laughs> it wouldn't be much fun but uh, <laughs> anyway that's and these are all need to be sort of precision machined and uh, like i said the drive shafts on an angle and so on um all these pieces are and, they, and they're all in a kind of a vulnerable place so when you find them you know everything's usually rusted solid and so forth or, or just removed completely because nobody really uses capstan winches anymore so most of the rovers have them taken off and, re and replaced with an electric one. But it's a kind of a charming piece of uh, uh, mechanical equipment, which we thought was important. Okay. And, and it can be done without climbing under the car. Um, if, it's, if it's disengaged, um, we'll disengage it here, and then we'll turn the shaft so that it's not, it's not uh, aligned. You can partially engage it and then turn the shaft from, you know, just reaching underneath. Uh, until it, it, until you feel it, you know, kind of align with the pins. Um, yeah. And, uh, and then it, it should just, yeah, you can just engage it without actually climbing under the car. Um, now, if that, if that flange and, and pinholes and stuff up there are full of mud and that sort of thing, it's going to be a little more difficult. But, um, but yeah, you can, you can do it without climbing under the car. It just takes that feel. You just have to know what to feel for. But, uh, but it can be done. Right. Now I see the wrap something around it. <laughs> what about opening the hood? Uh, opening the hood, there's just a, a, a single uh, release arm here. Um, push it down a little bit. Yeah, so you push it down first to yeah. take the weight off it. Okay. Yeah. Take and the tension that. off. And, and if, then you, yeah, this, if you want to remove the rod, you can just take that split pin out. Yeah, there's a pin right there. Yeah, and then, and then the thing just slides off on the hinges on there. And um, closing the hood? And then closing the hood, of course, just lift it up a little bit. Like this the other way there's, there is a, a, a catch or whatever it is to to stop this from, from yeah. collapsing yeah. you have to pick it up above that uh, let it close and then as you're closing again hit the release button, push it down and it's locked into place all right great okay and let's go through uh some of the controls here uh dale why don't you just take us through those um, well, we'll do, I guess we'll start with, with, with actually starting the engine. Okay. Um, so 
this is your main ignition switch. Yeah. Um, so you just power that on. Yeah. Uh, your choke is just under here. It's just uh, you can see at the end it's got this little butterfly yep. symbol on it. Yeah. And when you pull the choke out, you notice this light comes on. That's to yep. tell you that your choke is on. Yeah. Um, if you're pulling, if sorry, if, if it's cold, you're going to pull the choke out a fair ways. Yep. Uh, if it's fairly warm, you're going to pull it out just a little bit. Uh, and then your starter button is right underneath the choke. Uh, make sure you're neutral or clutch in. Always safe to have a clutch in anyways. Um, and then you just hit your starter button okay, and it so should... Why don't you hit it? It should start within a few revolutions. And it's started. All right, nice. And if it's warmed up, uh, this engine isn't very warm, but if it's warmed up, you should be able to push the choke in and it stays idling, and it is, it's idling. Uh, so shut it off, just turn it back off like that. Okay, and what do we have for switch gear here? So for switch gear, uh, this bottom right-hand corner is for the uh, for the uh, the inside light. Okay, and that's that. That's, uh, that's the yep. interior light, it's actually quite bright. Yep. Um, kind of pleased with that. Uh, this switch here is for panel lights. Uh, and it is powered through the headlight switch, so I just leave it pulled out all the time because whenever you get your headlights on, presumably you're going to want your panel lights. So that's for your panel lights. Uh, this switch here is, it does say heater under there, except the paint is kind of worn off. So this is your heater switch. It's a two position switch, but it, there's only one speed on the heater. Um, okay. and, and this is likewise is a two position switch. Uh, it's, it's an on or an off on off switch. So yeah. either way, middle is on. Uh, this isn't wired like that, so this gets your heater, your blower motor, that gets you the same thing. So, okay. um, and then your headlights are here. Okay. Uh, first click is your marker lights, that's all your, your corner lights. Uh, and then the next click is your, is your headlights. And you can tell your headlights are on because your ammeter just, just bounced down okay. um, into draw. Uh, this power source here, the, the uh, inspection plugs they call them, uh, we don't have this power source connected. Uh, it's a source of, of many fires, uh, and we just didn't connect it. Yeah, good. Uh, over here, of course, you got your clock, um, your oil pressure gauge, and your temperature gauge. Okay, uh, and beneath that. And uh, under here, this is the horn button. Um, and then this is your wind, or your um, your signal light, uh, yeah. your indicators, uh, things you have to turn the, the key on. Uh, and I've got it set up so that uh, if you want to turn left, you actually push it to the left. Uh, this tells you that you're, uh, that you're flashing. Um, and then this is, there's a little air pump in here, and then it slowly releases air. So eventually it'll shut off. Uh, and then if you go to the other way, uh, same way, it's, it's, it's releasing the air that was put in it to begin with, so it, it just won't stay on for very long. Okay. Uh, hazard switch is here, and you have to go down two clicks for the hazard switch for all the lights to work. Okay. Um, so that's your hazard switch. Uh, we'll turn the key off. Don't forget to turn the key off because it's a points ignition system and if the key stays on and the points are closed, uh, you, your coil will get really hot and you could burn up the coil. Yeah, I did that already. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure the key is turned off. So, okay, wipers? Uh, wipers. Um, there is a park position for these wipers. Uh, this wiper just looks more attractive, not in the park position. Park position is actually way over here. Uh, yeah. And you can you can pull this this out just a little bit, and it slides into a hole. And this is actually the switch. Um, but then the wiper just looks a little awkward. So I've got them parked over on this side uh, to engage them. Um, there's there's just a little a, a push and pull in the gearbox um, to engage them. You push it all the way forward, uh, and then you turn the switch on. Uh, oh, the wipe the uh, this has to be on. You turn your your switch on. Oh, engage. Which way you have to go? Yeah, you got to push it forward. Um, so you get a little bit of windshield wiper there. A little bit. <laughs> uh, it's okay for the passenger, for the driver, maybe not. That's pretty there. useless. Uh, they are kind of kind of useless. So yeah, okay. Um, but anyway. you can do them manually if you. If yes, you, you can actually wipe wipe it all the way across manually. Yeah. It's it's kind of getting caught at the top. It's like the little the blade is just a little bit too. Long. All right, Anyways. all right. And then we have um, the vent screens. The vent screens. So I've got them all the way in right now. I'm trying to conform the the, the, the seal to the to the actual screen. So I don't want to release them because it was a bit of a pain. But you just slide this knob sideways, and then it'll lock into any one of these slots here for however wide you want the vents to open. Um, so yeah, we we just will leave those for now because they were a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem getting closed. I just want to I want to compress the rubber seal a little bit better uh, before we open those up. All right, um, and then I guess we got the windows. That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, this 
this screw in here only when only when this back um, window or portion is, is actually all the way closed. Yeah, um, you screw it in. If you, you don't, you'll in. scratch the glass. Yeah, if you don't, you'll scratch the glass. You do risk actually breaking the glass if you don't. So uh, you don't want to do that. Um, okay, and uh, the uh, gear shift knobs, let's just go through that. Okay, so this is fairly self-explanatory. The one is missing, or well, it's not missing, it's there. It's just no paint in it. Um, Reverse is over and up, and then one is up and two. And yeah, normal it's normal H, H pattern. Um, down here is your, your all-wheel drive uh, and your high-low range. Yeah. So it's in it's in high range right now. Yeah. And it's in rear wheel drive right now. Yeah. Um, so if you if you pull it back, so all the way forward is high range, all the way back is low range. Um, hang on, it was in four wheel drive at that point. So this is sprung. When yeah. you're in high range, you can push that down, and that takes you out of four wheel drive. You're only in rear wheel drive. When you switch to low range, this one will spring up. Yeah and now you're in low range, all wheel drive. Um, I don't know, I don't think you can go in low range, just rear wheel drive, it won't lock into place. So there's high range, two wheel Yeah, drive. okay, so when you go to low range, it automatically puts you in all wheel drive, yep. okay? But when you're in high range, you may opt uh, rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. Right. If you want high range in all wheel drive, you need to press the lever down. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, you release the lever. Actually. Release the lever, okay. Uh, and actually, it doesn't seem to want to release on its own. Yeah, so you, you cycle it through the low yeah. and high rope. The low and high and we've got our And we've got our throttle quadrant there. Uh, yeah, this is the hand, the throttle, hand throttle, throttle quadrant, okay. whatever it is. Um, there's little serrations on here, so you have to push it down, move it over, yeah. and then it locks into place. Um, it actually, you can slide it up. And, and it'll slide along the serrations. To release it, you have to push it down. Okay. Um, I always push it down all the time. I hate those noises, and noises mean wear, and, and I don't like wear, so. All right, all right. So what about the door seals? They were they were a little bit tricky, yeah. so let's, let's so, do that. Yeah. So for, for long-term, when you're inside, obviously you can't do this. Um, but for long-term, if you're, if you're just closing the door, uh, if you notice when I close the door, there's a little portion of the of the seal that kind of gets stuck up above the door surface. So as you're closing the door, you want to push that down and carefully you don't pinch your finger, but keep tucking it in there. Uh, and then once it's all the way in, then yeah. the door... And then it'll stay eventually. It's, it takes a bit of a push. Okay. Uh, it takes a bit of a push to close the door to the second latch. That's because the seals are, 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 are stiff. They're stiffer than they were from the factory. All aftermarket seals are like that. Um, and the only way we can do it is to keep the door closed and, uh, and hopefully train the seals, uh, compress them a little bit so that over time they eventually just get easier and easier to close. So uh, that's this side. Uh, the other side, we were having some issues with this, with this seal here, always wanting to be on the outside of, of, of the door frame or the window frame. Uh, so I, I just glued this seal in against itself um, so it closes relatively nicely. Uh, you just kind of want to watch the top one, but basically all the seals here are, are in behind the, the door frame. Uh, and then we just give the door a good push. And where are you pushing to see you don't dent the door? Uh, I'm pushing on the crown. Yeah. You always have more strength on the crown and I'm pushing out near the edge. I try not to, yeah, to push yeah. in here. So, but if you pushed it in the middle here, yeah, you, you would, might dent it. It's aluminum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is getting ready to get loaded on a transporter right now, but... Um, um, these slip up, they just, they're just spring loaded. They just yeah. And so it is going to be gone, but I hope that um, little bit of instruction anyway on, uh, on how to um, operate this rover. And I did include uh, a book in these pockets here. Let's just... Get those out. Uh, the instruction manual. So, <laughs> if in doubt, we can you can also look at the look at the manual. Okay. So with that, uh, it's Lawrence Romanowski and uh, Dale Wamsley, and uh, this rover is uh, now complete and uh, on its way to its new owner. Thanks for viewing. Please like and subscribe.